a struggle over there. All right, Coach, thanks for joining us today. Week number four, game number three of the season coming up. Richmond's one and one. We will play Delaware Saturday, 3.30, if you would. Opening statement on Delaware, and we'll take some questions. Well, Coach Keel was bringing another typical Delaware team in. Uh, they're big, they're strong, they're physical on both sides uh, of the line, on offense and on defense. Uh, you know, they're, they're a top 10 team, and it's, I expect it to be a typical Richmond-Delaware battle. There have been some good games over the past few years, and I don't expect this one to be any different. All right, thank you. Do you have a better feel for your team now than you may have after the Virginia game, not only because it's the second game, but because you were a little bit maybe a little bit closer to competition being one double A opponent and a ranked one at that? Well, you know, that's a good question, but because we're still not playing as well as I think we could play on either side of the ball. I think uh, on defense, we've got to get a better start, you know, to the game. And on offense, we've got to be able to run the ball consistently. So we know a little bit more, but we're not nearly, uh, nearly to the point where we want to be. I know Casey's got his own, their, Coach Keeler's got to deal with, he's got to deal with, but would you be slightly concerned if you were him, he may not know exactly what he's got because they haven't played the level of competition that you have. Well, I think there are two ways to look at it. Uh, you know, they they played you know one top ten team you know at that time in South Dakota, and the other two teams were you know lower level teams, but they they, they handled their own. I think they, they beat the teams handily. And I think you worry if you have a letdown against one of those teams. So I, I think he knows that he's got a pretty talented team, but I think he also knows that you know we should be able to give him a test this weekend. Uh, we got to talk to you after the game, but what, after you get a chance to look at the film and everything, what went right for you guys on Saturday outside of being able to, to not only score at the end of the game, but then score in overtime? Well, you know, on defense, you know, we didn't panic. So I think uh, that went right. You know, obviously we got, we got started slowly and then the defense, you know, picked it up until the last drive of the game. And I think on offense, when we had to make big plays, we did. And we talked last week about the ability to convert on third down and we converted 50% of our third downs. And I think that was a big key in the football game. Coach Scott, can you speak momentarily about the combination of Pat Devlin and Andrew Pierce, um, Delaware's quarterback, who's Penn State transfer, and this freshman who's really come on so strong early? Well, I think it definitely gives uh, Delaware the ability to have balance. You know, when you've got a quarterback that can make all the throws and a, and a running back that has big playability, you know, it definitely, definitely gives you the opportunity as a play caller, uh, you know, to be diverse and multiple, and they're, they're both talented players. And, you know, we, we've got to be on our best uh, to contain them. Coach, can you just talk about practice so far? I mean, since the, the big win, I mean, it seems like there might be a chance of a letdown. Can you just talk about maybe how your team's responded since the sort of emotional win on Saturday? Well, we talked about it, you know, Saturday night and we talked about it into Sunday. We told the guys to enjoy the win on Saturday, uh, you know, enjoy, enjoy it a little bit on Sunday. But Sunday night, you know, when we came over to practice, we got going on Delaware and uh, the, the leadership on this team realizes that this is a tough team coming in. So I think, you know, we were able to switch our focus very easily. Having a top 10 team come in, I mean, does that make it easier to focus? A little bit? Well, it seems all. like we have a top 10 team coming every week, so <laughs> so our focus is pretty much the same. But these guys are competitors, and uh, they look forward to playing the top competition. Coach Scott, your quarterback hadn't played regularly in a couple of years, learning his teammates still, learning his coaches still. You expect everybody to get better, but do you expect him to progress even more, perhaps, just because of his pedigree and him getting used to the situation here? I think the sky's the limit for Aaron. I mean, Aaron works at it. Aaron does the things that a quarterback needs to do to be successful. You know, he's in watching tape. Uh, he spends, spends time with, with his teammates, and uh, he's becoming a leader. I think, you know, he took a little bit of a backseat to some of the upperclassmen uh, initially coming in, trying to, you know, fit into the team. But I think, you know, through his play, he's become a, he's become a guy that guys look to. May I follow up just by asking about the wide receivers again and how much <laughs> – might that development be accelerated if all hands finally got on deck? Well, you know, when we do get them all together, I think you can see it's a, it's a pretty potent uh, trio of guys. I mean, they all caught passes, all, all made big plays in the game, you know, prior to some of the guys going down. But we have uh, younger guys that stepped in and made catches also. You know, Aaron was able to connect with eight different guys uh, during the game. So we look forward to having our top three receivers back. But, you know, the reason we recruit is so that we've got, you know, dynamic players all over the board. Going off that last question, uh, can you touch on Dante's uh, situation and if he's out for a while, who's going to step in? Well, you know, Dante broke a rib, so uh, we expect Dante to be out, you know, somewhere between two and three weeks, and it's a shame because obviously he missed the Virginia game, but, uh, you know, he was able to bounce back against Elon and make some great plays. But like I said, guys like Ben Edwards, uh, guys like John Thompson, our tight end, Sam Roller and Kevin Finney, those guys will pick up the slack. Coach, may I ask you about Brandon Scott? Uh, obviously a big guy, but very uh, agile individual. Was there any debate about where to use him 
because he can do several things, obviously. Well, the interesting thing about B.J., he's, he's a high school wideout, so we may move him back to offense this week. But, no, um, you know, B.J. gives us the dynamic that gives us the ability to rush the passer. Uh, he's big, he's strong, he's athletic, and I don't think we've seen the best of B.J. yet. You know, he's, uh, he's grown into his role as a defensive lineman, and, you know, he made some plays last week uh, in the pass game, you know, dropping into coverage. So I, I think the sky's the limit for B.J. I'm going to ask one more about cramping. Uh, I, I think it was a cramp that got Martin Parker at Virginia, yes? Mm -hmm. And Aaron obviously had some issues against Elon. It's supposed to be hot again Saturday. Um, are you advising your guys more than ever, perhaps, to load up on the liquids Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Well, definitely. We, we asked them to start Sunday night you know, after practice. We told them that it's impossible to hydrate yourself on Thursday for a Saturday football game, and we know it's supposed to be in the – high 80s, you know, low 90s on uh, Saturday morning. So we're going to do the best as a, a strength staff and as a training staff to make sure that these guys are hydrated by, by, by the time Saturday rolls around. Is this a greater point of emphasis given the issues you've had in the first two games? I think so. Uh, you know, I really didn't expect it at Virginia, but I don't know that we expected the weather to be the way it was on Saturday night, I mean, on Saturday against Elon. So we just got to make sure that we do our best and, then, and the guys have to do their best to make sure that they're on track to, to be uh, hydrated. Coaching staffs are so close between you and UVA. I, forgive me, I don't know if you're going to play them, what the future schedule is like, but if, has anybody had a chance to talk to them? Did you kind of pick their brain about, hey, what did you see out of us? What do you think we need to work on just to get someone else's perspective on your own team after the, the first game? We did. I think there's so many ties, you know, between the two staffs. Uh, Mike and I talked. I think the coordinators talked. You know, I think we, uh, we don't play those guys for a while, so, you know, we, we, we shared some ideas and just – you know, figured out, you know, tried to figure out together, you know, what we could do better on both sides of the ball. And uh, we, we did exchange some ideas, and it was helpful on both sides. Kind of shifting gears, how do you think the fact that it's parents' weekend will contribute to the atmosphere of the game? We wish we could get all the parents in, first of all. But, uh, you know, obviously, you know, we, we expect the parents that, that are able to come to the game, uh, we want them there. You know, I think it, it may create a little bit more traffic, but I don't think that'll be an issue. I think our administration, our event management uh, handled the traffic last week well, but it's just another group of people on campus, and it gives the parents the opportunity to see uh, the, the special place that Robin Stadium is. Why don't you quickly discuss kind of the contribution the students made to Saturday's game? It was a great crowd, and what are your thoughts on them and what they brought to that game atmosphere on Saturday? Uh, the students brought an electric atmosphere. I mean, just to see, and I've seen, you know, several different videos and tapes uh, on the things that they did and uh, the things that were going on around the day. It, it was great for our guys. Our spider walk, you know, came up in the X lot. We had uh, fans, alumni, students, and uh, I think the, the probably the most spectacular part of the day is when Tyler scored his touchdown and you turn around and you see – uh, the students jumping over the railing, uh, you know, coming onto the field. That, that's what college football is all about, and we're excited about our students, and we look forward to, uh, you know, spending the next couple of weeks with them here on campus. Anything else for Coach? All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Thanks. Redshirt freshman defensive lineman Brandon Scott. Hey Brandon, I wonder if you could speak to Delaware and uh, offensively what they bring. Talked a moment ago about that freshman running back, and then you got a quarterback with a great pedigree. Um, you know, I look at it just as, you know, another football team. We've seen film on them. They look aggressive, a little bit more aggressive than Elon. But like I said, um, we prepare for them like we prepare for any team. Um, their offensive line is a little bit more aggressive, so we'll be prepared for that. But uh, I'm not worried, and I know the rest of the defensive line is not worried. Brandon, what was said in the defensive huddle after the first touchdown that Elon scored Saturday? Because you seem like you guys flipped a switch right after that happened. Um, we just needed to respond. Um, we did, we uh, were just kind of figuring out what, what they were going to come out and look like, and um, they came out strong the first drive, so we just decided to respond. And I came to a defense who's been strong in the past every year, so they just needed a, you know, a little wake-up call, and we got it, and we, um, I think we responded really well. Any, any similarities between what Elon does and what 
you expect to see from Delaware? Um, not too much. I mean, like I said, after seeing film, like I said, their their offensive line is a little bit more aggressive. Um, but uh, I guess we'll be we'll be changing things things up a little bit too to fit that. But um, I can't really see too many similarities between the two offensive lines. Hey, Garrett, can you talk about the loss of Dante in terms of the running game? Obviously, the passing game is going to be impacted. But what about the running game? Yeah, Dante is a great player, and he's definitely going to be missed. So it means we're going to have to step up as far as the running game. O line is going to have to push hard, and uh, the running backs are going to have to find holes. You know, with Dante being gone, it's going to put more pressure on KG and Trey to make plays, and some of the other receivers, you know, to step up. So you know, the running game is going to definitely have to be on point this week. Hey, Garrett, for younger guys who are going into their first Colonial game, do you have any advice? Um, just to keep your head. It's easy to get. You know, I guess too hyped for this game with it being our first conference game and our second game in the stadium. So just to maintain an even head and not get not get too much caught into the hype of playing Delaware because, you know, we met them in the semis, you know, a couple of years back, and then we had a close game last year with a blocked field goal. So just, I said, keep your head and, you know, just focus on the task at hand. DJ, how much have you guys addressed that first drive when you're on the field? Back weeks, you let the other team go down the field and, and score. Is that even something you can practice in practice, the, the mental and physical makeup of the first time you're on the field? Um, well, I guess uh, Coach Wiltz, our, our defense line coach, the thing he preaches the most is tempo and setting the tempo first off, you know, the first drive of the game. So I think as far as defense line, it's just setting the tempo as soon as we get on the field. And um, I think that's the most important because we, you know, we, we try to get the defense off first just to you know, get the game going. And, um, I guess that's the most important aspect of starting the game. You had just given up the game tying touchdown on the last play, and you're right back out there again. What was that like? What was your mindset having to boom, immediately go back after you kind of had that, that dagger hit you? you know, we could have gave up, but I, I, I'm saying like there was times in, during the game when you know, we'd get a three and out, and then we'd get an you know, interception. We had to go right back out there. And, you know, we were just we, we were hyped the whole entire game just, you know, because we knew we could play against that offense, so we just, you know, we just took it as what it was. You know, we had to stop them one more time, and we did. And that's when our offense showed up, and we won the game. I wonder if both of you guys could address this, Brandon, first. Uh, can you just talk about the way the game ended, and sort of how the coaching staff addressed enjoying the win, but sort of getting back to business, not setting yourself up for a letdown, and sort of the tone of practice this week so far? Well, I think it's, you know, I came to a, a team that knows how to win, and I, mean, I don't think that was ever an issue. I know. You know, we've won conference championships, national championships. So um, I don't know about Garrett, but I know I was just, you know, happy about the win because it was my first collegiate when playing a football game, but also just ready to get to the next team and get ready to go. And I feel like everyone else felt the same way. Yeah, it was, um, it was a great win. You know, the team came out into the overtime period. And it's one of the things where you just got to know that we've been in this situation before. So don't, it's not, it's, it was pressure, but don't put too much pressure on yourself. So we, we executed an offense and defense. And then, you know, we celebrated the win on Saturday and Sunday. And Coach told us, you know, we got another great top 10 team coming in. We can never relax because every team in our conference, like I said, is almost a top 10 team. So, you know, just being in the situation and knowing who we have, you shouldn't have to, you know, you shouldn't have to get hyped or get ready for the game like that. Can you guys kind of address how it felt playing in Robbins Stadium? Garrett, probably even more for you. I mean, the place where you used to play was a place to play football, it really wasn't at home. Mm-hmm. Stadium and to actually have a home stadium. Yes, yeah, like you said, we came home, but then again, it also felt like practice as well because that's what we practice. We practice there every day, and just to be able to get a win in that stadium, you know, the first win ever, it felt really good. And and just to score in there, you know, just with everything that was going on, it felt really, felt, felt really good. Yeah, and for me, as far as me, I just I like the excitement with all the students there, I had my family there, and just having everyone being able to make the games. I know a lot of times it was difficult for people to make the games because of the distance of the stadium, but just having the stadium and walking distance where everyone could just come and enjoy the game and the excitement and just the atmosphere is something that I'm, I'm going to like getting used to. So, yeah. Anything else? All right, fellas, thanks for your time. Best of luck Saturday. Thank you.